Um, I'm going to go back to something you said about uh, in the film, the integration of the quantum and um, the, uh, the the neurology and that's sort of the biology part. Because people, we purposely in, in the film kind of left that vague so that people could put it together for themselves. And they're very interested in the science behind that. How would you see? Th how do you see them fitting together? Well, you, you did a very nice job in fitting them together in one way in the film. And that is both really see, both of these disciplines, modern quantum physics and molecular biology, neuroimmunology, they both say that we do create our own realities and that we have a lot of responsibility over the world in which we live, at least the way we experience the world and the way the world behaves towards us. That's a very good connection, actually. That was brilliant. Uh, ultimately, what we'd like to see is what is the physics of consciousness? We can ask that question today. What is consciousness? Where does it come from? What are the origins of consciousness? What are the limits of human potential? We're in a position to actually answer that now, I believe, although there's certainly not consensus yet in the scientific community about that. But with the real cutting-edge knowledge, the discovery of the unified field, the so-called superstring field, we now understand that life is fundamentally one. At the basis of all life's diversity, there is unity. At our basis, you and I are one. And that unity at the basis of mind and matter is consciousness, universal consciousness. So with that deep understanding that consciousness isn't created by the brain, it's not purely an outcome of molecular chemical processes in the brain, but is fundamental in nature. It's the very core of nature. We call it the unified field. Now that we have that foundational understanding of what consciousness is, we can solve the mind-body problem. We can see how consciousness percolates up through our physiology to become the consciousness that we experience and see and sensory perception and all of that. So there is a foundation now to really link rigorously neuroscience with quantum physics. That might be really a next step in the development of the movie. You've asked the questions in the first movie. Now we're just on the verge of being able to answer those questions. So you mentioned the unified field. For people who never, a lot of people are going, well, that sounds nice, it's unified, everything's one. Could you dive a little more technically into what the unified field is? Progress in our understanding of the universe through physics over the past quarter century has been exploring deeper levels of natural law from the macroscopic to the microscopic from the molecular to the atomic to the nuclear to sub-nuclear levels of nature's functioning, so-called electroweak unified scale, grand unified scale, super unified scale. And what we've discovered at the core basis of the universe, the foundation of the universe, is a single universal field of intelligence, a field which unites gravity with electromagnetism, light, with radioactivity, with the nuclear force, so that all the forces of nature and all the so-called particles of nature, quarks, leptons, protons, neutrons, are now understood to be one. They're all just different ripples on a single ocean of existence. That's called the unified field or superstring field, and it's a mathematical tour de force. But we have realized Einstein's dream. He dedicated half of his life to discovering this unified field. And now in the context of the superstring, that has been achieved. So unified field theories based on the superstring identify a single universal field of intelligence, an ocean of existence at the basis of everything, mind and matter. And all the so-called particles of the universe, the forces in our universe, everything in the universe are just ripples of on that ocean of existence. That's the unified field. And that field is, non, is a non-material field. It is ultimately the field of consciousness. And all our separate consciousness, wherever there's consciousness, is merely consciousness by virtue of the fact that my consciousness, your consciousness, are ultimately that. Everything in the universe is really nothing but that. Planets, trees, people, animals, we're all just waves of vibration of this underlying unified superstring field. We are really united at our core. And ultimately, the understanding that's emerging will be that there is only one consciousness in this room. And it is you. And it is me. And it is each and every one of us. We individualize our consciousness through the filter of our nervous system. But the consciousness itself, our very inner subjectivity, 
the self in the big sense, that is universal. And knowing that, ex knowing it through experience, is called enlightenment and has been called enlightenment through the ages. It sounds like you're going down through the, the physical realms, leptons, you know, smaller, smaller, and you're saying at the base, it's not solid, it's intelligence. Why do you use the word intelligence? That is a very brilliant question. It, what you're saying really reflects a bias that all of us share. Everyone who's grown up in the scientific world is used to the concept that we're living in a material universe, an inert universe, a universe of dead matter. And because of that, <clears throat> it's difficult instinctively to grasp that we're not really living in a dead universe, that the universe is overwhelmingly conscious at its basis. See, what we have seen and studied for 300 years of classical physics is what we call billiard ball mechanics, macroscopic physics, classical physics, the physics of billiard balls, cannonballs, and planets. But quantum mechanics, even at the molecular level, let alone atomic, nuclear, subnuclear, in the realm of quantum mechanics, the idea of particle is replaced by the idea of wave function. And what is a wave function? Technically, it's a vector in a linear space. But what's a vector in a linear space? What's it made of? What's the substance of nature? Well, a wave function, a vector in a linear space, is made of the same stuff thoughts are made of. We're li really living in a thought universe, a conceptual universe. Quantum mechanics is just the play and display of potentiality. So the point I'm making is the deeper you go in the structure of natural law, the less material, the less inert, the less dead the universe is, the more alive, the more conscious the universe becomes. Then when you get to the foundation of the universe, the unified field or superstring field, it's simply a field of pure, being, pure intelligence. Intelligence because it's the fountainhead of all the laws of nature, all the fundamental forces, all the fundamental particles, all the laws governing life at every level of the universe have their unified source in the unified field. That makes the unified field the most concentrated field of intelligence in nature, non-material, dynamic, self-aware intelligence. Those are the properties of the unified field. Could you also use the term, because um, I've read this someplace, some people are saying at the bottom, it's also um, information. Is that kind of similar, or is that another way to describe the same thing? It's very similar. I'd say the quantum world, quantum mechanics, is really the play and display of information, the play and display of potentiality, waves of information, waves of potential electron. And it's important, the word potential. This isn't the world of electrons, it's the world of potential electrons. But when you have, you have to ask the question, waves of what, really? What is the field that is waving? Is it the ocean? <laughs> no, it's a universal ocean, an ocean of pure potentiality, an ocean of abstract potential existence. We call it the unified field, or superstring field. And that's what we're made of. So, as you said, the tighter physics have tried to grasp on to physical reality, to understand what it's really made of, what are the core building blocks of life, at the basis of it all. Life, the universe, slips through your fingers, and you come up with something that's increasingly abstract, increasingly abstract, to the come to the realm of pure abstraction. And that's what the unified field is. It's pure abstract potential, pure abstract being, pure abstract self-aware consciousness which rises in waves of vibration to give rise to the particles, the people, everything we see in the vast universe. That was great. I got, I got awesome. goosebumps on that one. <laughs>
Very interesting. In order to transcend to experience unbounded awareness, consciousness has to settle down completely. Now, if you try and reproduce that experience, you'll never succeed because trying involves effort and effort keeps